Hey everyone, how are you all doing? With Cad Bane's appearance in the Bad Batch, which was such a sweet surprise, I figured I would do 10 interesting facts about Cad Bane. Now keep in mind these aren't all of his facts, I'm just picking and choosing from a few that I found on the internet, namely Wikipedia and of course some other novel sources, which you will see in the rest of this video. So I will be doing a part 2 to this video at some other time and then eventually combining them for a top 20 facts about Cad Bane. So if you don't know who he is, this video will give you a bit of a rundown on what he's been up to in the Clone Wars, if you haven't seen the Clone Wars, or if you need a bit of a refresher. So starting in at number 1, we have Cad Bane's early life. Now his early life is one that I hope to see in a spin-off show of some sorts. By the time of the Clone Wars, he was already in his 50s, so to him, things weren't really all that personal anymore at this more of a mature age. A job was a job, and if it paid, he would get it done. The Duros species bounty hunter was very intelligent. Much like Thrawn, he was always several steps ahead of his bounty. He was second in the galaxy only to Jango Fett, and once Jango died at the hands of Mace Windu on the Battle of Genosis, Cad Bane was considered the best. His specialty was killing, naturally, like most bounty hunters, but what made him unique like Jango was his ability to kill Jedi where other bounty hunters could not. This was due to his keen intellect and very fast reflexes. Combined with his aggression and ruthless behavior, it left for a bounty hunter that never faltered under pressure. Some notable hires included the Huts, the Separatists, and Palpatine himself, which we're gonna get into all of them. Number two, his mask. Have you ever wondered about his mask? Why does he wear that thing? Does he have problems breathing like Vader did? Now while tubes and masks weren't unheard of in a galaxy where so many different species have different biologies, you know, some can't breathe oxygen, Bane's was for a different reason. He knew Jedi and Sith used the ability Force Choke, so as he fought more and more Force users, he eventually realized this threat was rather overpowered, and devised a breathing tube apparatus to go down his throat, which prevented any force user from force choking him in the future. Like Anakin, for example, if the seldom few Jedi would use such a power, as it was more deemed to be a dark side ability. It also allowed him to breathe in areas without oxygen, like space. Number three, he worked with Obi-Wan, eh, sort of. If you remember in the Clone Wars, Cad Bane was arrested by the Republic, all according to his plan. He did this in order to rescue an inmate named Moralo Ival, who was working with Dooku. Now their plan was to kidnap Palpatine, so Cad paid little Boba Fett, who was also in the prison, to create a diversion, a distraction, while he and Reiko Hardin, who was actually Obi-Wan Kenobi in disguise, escaped. Now, Obi-Wan, or Reiko, was also on a secret mission of his own to stop the kidnapping of the Chancellor. Once they got out, Cad Bane, Obi-Wan, the rest of the bounty hunters, and Dooku entered the box, which was just a room in a building filled with a sort of life or death obstacle course, kind of like the Saw movies. Dooku did this to see who would be the best bounty hunter to kill Palpatine, sort of like a test. Well, no, essentially a test. Cad survived, and so did Morallo and Obi-Wan, who everyone still believed was Reiko Hardin. If it wasn't for Obi-Wan revealing his true identity, Cad Bane's plan might have succeeded. That being said, we all know Palpatine couldn't actually be killed. He was just pretending to be this feeble and weak politician. At this point in time, Cad Bane was sent to prison for life in a Republic jail. Number four, weapons. A bounty hunter never is without their weapons. Cad Bane's weapons of choice were Akimbo LL-30 blasters, dual blasters. Customized with a special scope and a fast rate of fire, he was able to throw off even his most skilled targets. The Jedi with their lightsabers, that is. In addition to dual pistols, he had rockets attached to his heels. Much like the Fets were equipped with jetpacks, he was partially Iron Man, which allowed him to get out of any situation by flying or leaping away. Out of all of his weapons, the most deadly were his gauntlets, which were kind of like Inspector Gadget. They had a wire cord, much like Jango used against Obi-Wan and Boba Fett used on Luke Skywalker in Return of the Jedi, flamethrowers, little projectile launchers, much like the Mando has those singing birds, and the ability to shoot electrical currents to shock his enemies. Now I should also mention that his hat doesn't offer any type of gadget or ability like Odd Job. He did once kill another bounty hunter just for wearing it. So never touch his hat, note to self. 
Number five, Sidious. Cad Bane had many powerful people hiring him for various jobs and deeds, and he was that good. One of these people was, of course, Palpatine himself, Darth Sidious, who required Bane to steal a Jedi holocron. Now, this holocron was special. I don't know all of them are, but this one in particular. It was known as the Cyber Memory Crystal. It listed all the known locations of every Force-sensitive child in the entire galaxy. Something surely Palpatine wanted, and so does Cal Kestis, but both for different reasons. The Holocron was in the Jedi Temple itself, and if you remember, it was guarded by Bola Ropal, the Rodian Jedi Master. Now, Rodians were the same species as Greedo, if you didn't know. Now, one does not simply just walk into the Jedi Temple and steal a holocron. Unless, of course, you're Cad Bane, who eventually challenged the Jedi Master regarding it and defeated him, holding him prisoner. Master Ropal never gave in to Bane's extreme methods of revealing the information, and he eventually met his demise. So without any way of opening this holocron, he improvised when the Republic came to the aid of the Rodian Jedi Master. Anakin and Ahsoka were part of the rescue team. So, naturally, Cad Bane captured Ahsoka and forced Anakin to unlock the holocron for him in exchange for her life. He took out a clone trooper and wore the armor to disguise himself as he escaped freely. Number six, mind power. Happy with the job well done, Sidious hired Cad Bane once more now that he knew the location of so many Force-sensitive children, thanks to Anakin opening the holocron. He had Bane kidnapped four children and to bring them to his facility on Mustafar. Palpatine planned on making dark side spies, so Cad Bane executed his contract in his typical fashion until the Republic captured him. It took Obi-Wan, Anakin Skywalker, and Mace Windu to perform a Jedi mind trick on him to reveal the location of the children, but to no avail. Bane resisted successfully, and in the end, the Jedi eventually recovered the cyber memory crystal and rescued the children from Mustafar. However, Cad Bane tricked them long enough to escape once again. Number seven, Cad vs. Boba Fett. Before the Clone Wars got canceled, there was an entire planned arc with Boba Fett who had a standoff with Cad Bane. Now that we see Cad in the Bad Batch, it's very, very possible that we could see this conclusion, either in the Bad Batch or even better, maybe in live action in the Book of Boba, depending how they want to do it. Or perhaps we could see it in both and then in the Book of Boba as a flashback. I'm not sure about you guys, but sometimes I feel like what is made in animation should end in animation and not be put into live action. But once we got Ahsoka and Bo-Katan and so on, honestly, it was kind of even better for me in live action. It was different, but I enjoyed it in a different way, which was pretty awesome. Anyways, in the unseen arc of Bane and Boba, Bane would have joined Boba and told him he knew Django his father. Boba would wear the green armor for the first time and their fate would end in a western style standoff. Whether Cad survives or not is not officially confirmed or denied, only there are fan theories out there which point towards Cad dying, but some point towards him being alive too. That said, the ones that point to him dying make a lot of sense because the theories are, well, Bane must die because, well, Boba is still alive because we see him in Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi and I highly doubt Boba would just let him walk as a free man. You know that large dent on Boba's helmet? Yeah, that's a shot from Cad Bane himself. Number eight, Jabba. Jabba the Hutt had a bit of a rowdy family member named Zero the Hutt who was being held captive by the Republic. The Hutt Council believed Zero was too dangerous to be left in prison as he knew too much about the Hutt's operations and private details that could be leaked if questioned under pressure. So, naturally, Jabba, old buddy, old pal, hired Cad Bane to break Zero out and return him to the Hut Cartel. So Cad abducted R2 and 3PO, which gave him access to the map of the Senate building. Bane then put together a crew of other bounty hunters and together they took the building with several senators hostage as collateral. Zero was sadly killed by his former lover and one of Jabba's top singers that we saw in Return of the Jedi, Sai Snooties. Number nine, his ship. Bane flew a smooth looking ship, a modified rogue class starfighter called Xanadu Blood. 
Equipped with dual laser cannons and a shield generator, this ship was a gift from Papa Palps himself as a reward for stealing the holocron with the information about the force sensitive children. He used this ship quite a lot to say the least. The ship flew very fast and it was stealthy, and not to mention it was controlled by his wrist gauntlets for ease. It also had a you know regular comm system, navigation system, but if he needed to control it by his wrist, he could do that. Kind of like the Green Goblin in Spider-Man. Number 10, the Wills. Do you guys remember the Wills? The Force-like god beings that Qui-Gon learned how to transfer his essence into the Force from, who then went on to teach Yoda, who then taught Obi-Wan, who then taught Anakin, and so on. This was also what George was going to do for the first Star Wars film. He was going to have the Wills observing the events of the Skywalkers, maybe playing a hand uh, here or there, you know, fixing something, moving something, making something a little more difficult. Who knows? The Journal of the Wills is where they would have documented everything. And like DTs, as they recorded everything they saw, they end up actually mentioning Cad Bane. So he was big enough of a figure in the galaxy to be considered and discussed by these godlike beings. The following excerpt comes from a certain point of view, and it's a discussion between two wills. So here we go. Will 1 says, Next, you're going to tell me that you weren't planning to mention Captain Rex, Ahsoka, Ventress, Cad Bane, Savage Opress, Jar Jar, and the Mandalorians. Will 2 says, Well, I guess I could always go back and tell their stories later. Will 1 says, Out of order? So, what I'm thinking, even you know, just from that dialogue, and I hope, this is just a theory and a hope that I have, is that all of these backstories for these characters that were mentioned, and many more down the line, will be explained at some point in the future. Either in their own show, spin-off film, heck, even give me a comic, you know? Showing their early life and the end of it, but go into detail, I wanna know the nitty gritties. Or they could even put it in some other show like The Bad Batch, for example, which I think what they're doing, which never really made me think that we'd see Cad Bane in there, but it fits so well. And bonus fact number 11, Sabine Wren and Rebels had a painting of Cad Bane on her ship. Let me know what you guys thought of this breakdown, which facts about him are your favorite, not just from the video, but in general that I may have left out. Because if you comment, I will make another video and include that fact that you enjoyed so much and explain it in great detail. Let me know what your Cad Bane theories are down below in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this top 10 and I will catch you in the next video. Until then, remember, the force will be with you always.